Hi everyone, this is Dan from Random Media Guys, and I recently heard about the terrorist bombings in France. I actually had been working on some stuff and had not been listening to many things while the uh, it happened. I re after I heard about it, I checked many news sources include and even some YouTubers include like Mr. Epshon who were making responses to this uh, tragic event. Now what I gotta say is on a personal level, I don't get why people do this. I mean attack civilians. I mean I know people do terrorism. I know the, the motive behind it, but I just I can't see that as a person me hurting another human being to in order to get my way. I mean, I can understand getting in a fight with someone, punching him, and then that's in order to get my way. But I can never see. I I, I don't get it why these terrorist groups do this. I mean, I I know that in war or and things you dehumanize people so that they're just blank faces. It's not as hard to blow up a blank face than it is to blow up a human being who may or may not have a family and kids and a business or a job. And maybe was just walking home when a bomb goes off and kills him. I just, I don't get what, I mean, even when I was religious, I was a Catholic. I was never taught that you should you should uh, hurt people. I was taught if you don't like something, you forgive you, you if or you, have you forgive someone, and you know that's what you do. You you're, you're very obliging to people, and and if there if you have something wrong with the government, you go and protest and you send letters to you, your representatives. And I, I, I got that. I mean, maybe it's because I, I don't get why I study things because I live in a country where that was at par for course where you, you, you do a non-violent uh, protest. But, I mean, you, I mean, I, I guess, um, and this is not me being trying to be, but this is no way me any cracks to anybody who was there, but, 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 but in that region, I've known that it's very unstable at the time. And, I mean, in areas like for Saudi Arabia, or under Mubarak, or, uh, what does the government is considered sedition, and therefore punishable by things like death, and if you're not by death, but by torture and imprisonment which are perfect things and many many of these people were not over many fat many uh dictatorial things were not overthrown um, except for through through uh act of violent action which i understand that makes a lot of sense if you're coming from a culture where that's the only way you can get to get political expedient and Practical political change. I mean, look at Syria right now. They're entrenched in war, and many of these people, all they think of is, I don't like the system, or the, and they're told to destroy in order to change, which is a very horrible mentality, in my opinion. And, I mean, and uh, it's not just, I know that historically, it's not just, uh, People from the Middle East who here. I mean, America had its own set of terrorists. We had uh, the Oklahoma City Bomber. We had the KKK. So it's not limited just to, um, you know, Middle East. I mean, terrorists all, it happens all over the world for all sorts of reasons. The Irish, for instance, the, the IRA. But uh, these people are blowing up in the or in terrorist attacks in a country far away from their homeland because a militant Islamic group 
says it's the right way, and that's when we can get paradise. And that's what Allah says. That the Prophet Muhammad said that you know you mu you must go must commit a jihad, and those who who do jihad will be uh, sent to the greatest paradise ever with seventy two hoodie uh, to satiate their ever need their eternal needs is some really fucked up mentality and I know there are a lot of uh, Muslims out here who, who who don't or not or an Arab tonight I have a boss one of my supervisors very great guy he is Egypt he's an Egyptian uh, and he is He's from Egypt. He has a a noticeable accent, but speaks really good. One of my favorite uh, supervisors. Real, I've I've had friends who, uh, from that region. I've met people who are Pakistani, who are, you know, Iranian, who are, you know, Jordanian. All sorts of really, we're really cool people. These are people I I you know wouldn't I. Don't think uh, I don't associate them with this radical Islamist, but it's scary because you know that's going to happen. What happened after 9/11? Everybody who looked vaguely uh, Middle Eastern was attacked. There, were, there is as people who are Sikh being attacked. People who maybe are you know Persian, but there's no astronaut. They're Christian and they are attacked. Because of the way they look, and you know that's going to happen in France, and I'm worried about that happening because it is a, it is a perpetual cycle of violence. It and it's what I hate to say it, it's many ways it's what terrorists want to do. They want to divide people. When you have uh, united people in a country, you can't get a lot of these extreme ideas moving. But you do a terrorist attack, suddenly, you know, uh, uh, Mohammed, uh, whatever, is attacked by his Caucasian buddy because he looks, because he looks like a terrorist. And he gets disenfranchised, and it makes it a lot easier to lure in people you might. The people who are easy who are into these extreme things are the disenfranchised and the downtrodden because they're like, "Well, I want to feel empowered." It is very, it is very seductive, and I'm fairly sure they're going to try to play these attacks and the right to their advantage. You know, ISIS will do. That is why they were they did so well in the Middle East because it's the. The uh, political situation is so unstable, and that is, you know, right for the picking. And I hope things get better and it doesn't turn this bad, but we can only hope. Thank you for watching. My name is Dan, Randy and I will see you guys later. Bye bye.